when the flush of a newborn sun fell first on Eden's green and gold, our father Adam sat under the tree and scratched with the stick in the mold. And the first rude sketch that the world had seen was joy to his mighty heart. Till the devil whispered behind the leaves, it's pretty, but is it art? city of artists has basically been painting um, a variety of different storefronts uh, with murals in a way that uh, you could say is different from any other city that's experiencing similar times uh, right now. It's been a constant hearing people proclaim they didn't realize how much uh, talent was in the Northwest in a visual artistic sense, not merely musical which what we're mostly known for. It's interesting that in a global pandemic, this is something, an avenue of creation that's thriving. It's just like a novel situation. It's so beautiful and so strange and so telling, I think, of just the necessity and the vitality that art brings. And so what it is to just experience the different spectrum of life and interact with it in a really novel and unusual time in human history. The ability to change perception and thus just a little of reality through the smallest amount of paint, really, in a very temporary way, is, is immense. The psychological benefit of murals is without a doubt. And to be able to contribute that in a time of, of general need here in our pandemic has been pretty special. It gave us a way to showcase that talent in like more of like a toe in the water kind of way. Like let's dip our feet in and see what happens with this. And I think I'm hoping that the outpour of art and outpour of support and outpour of the city saying thank you. Like I've never been thanked for my art before. You know, like I've been appreciated, I've been bought, I've been shared, but I've never had anybody say, thank you for doing this. Uh, it's, it's making my day better. And the pandemic has allowed us to, to really see what art has the potential and is and can and will do uh, if we utilize it in the right ways. When the boarding first started coming up and I had heard about it, I certainly wasn't, I didn't see it firsthand just because I was staying inside like everyone else. I was just making art in my own little world, but uh, I had heard about it from my gallery owner friend and she was just rather psychologically distraught from the sheer image of seeing such a thing. I think that when the, it was just plywoods, it has this like deeper sense of apocalyptic in this way of just like everything is shut down. It just seemed like the world was ending. I've watched the movies. I, I mean, being in your house all day, adds to that depression as well. And when you go out, you just see a, a, a blank canvas landscape of what you used to call your neighborhood. We were forced closure on the 16th of March of 2020. We were forced closed to allow anybody in our building on the 16th was the last day. Even though we're all separate business owners, we're all, we're all in this together right now. And we all, we want everybody to survive this. We want everybody to, to be successful. I am a firm believer that high tide raises all ships. And if we can keep everybody's ship afloat right now, we'll all be okay. Artists have never seen so much blank canvas in their city, who've grown up here, lived here. It was, it was, for them, it was like a gift, you know, because they have creative 
freedom and expression and everybody in the city gets to see their artwork at no cost. One of the things that's beautiful about the whole concept of changing boarded up windows into art is the effect that it does have on the psyche as a whole. You get to actually have dialogue with community, no matter what type of mural or where you're doing it at. And to me, that's the beautiful part about doing murals, is the interaction with community members. I got to meet so many people in my neighborhood that I probably never would have talked to, you know? That to me was really powerful. There's acknowledgement and gratitude, but the amount of just like deep, heartfelt thank you from people was beautiful in addition to um, some of the painful aspects and there being also pain within the beauty of working in Pioneer Square, which has a pretty large homeless population. And um, just seeing the reality of their day-to-day -day because you're seeing the same people day-to-day. -day. And at the same time, there's these beautiful aspects in terms of getting to see parts of how they're making community and make meaning, but also just the reminder that these are humans who were once babies, who um, have had all sorts of life experiences that have led them to be there in that moment in time uh, that I could never know. You paint a beautiful mural and write the words, hope is not canceled, and you have that same person experiencing homelessness sleeping in that same spot, and now it becomes a powerful statement. Now people are stopping, they're taking photos of it, because now people take notice. How can hope not be canceled, but then there's also a man sleeping there who doesn't have a home? It's shown a light on a, a subject that has just become kind of like a understanding of that's how it is, but that's not how it should be. Uh, you realize there's enough space for everyone. And at the end of the day, you're merely just working with yourself and against yourself. And you want to do something that resonates with, with strangers on the streets, but also is uh, personal to you in a way. And uh, doing that in a new way every time is really the challenge. The murals didn't just help my neighborhood, because I live here in Pioneer Square. It, it genuinely saved maybe my life. I was in a very dark place. I, I thought that being home all the time was going to be so normal for me because I'm an introvert and I enjoy being home. But without any human contact for weeks on end, I started realizing that I was dying, man. And then I hit like this state of mania and I couldn't put it anywhere because I couldn't, I didn't have anything to do because I was just like stuck at home and I'm like not sleeping for like days on end. And, and then I got this opportunity to do a mural and it was like, God answered my prayers, man. Like it was like, I got something for you. I'm gonna have you go do this mural. And like I got outside, I got to meet a bunch of people that I had never met before. And it like kickstarted me back into normalcy again. It's, it's creating an energy of the community pulling together and you know, talking positive amongst one another. And also highlighting a lot of the, you know, stress, frustration and the gloom. But for the majority, I see my neighborhood coming together rather than distancing, even though we're distancing. If your entire downtown core is all boarded up, that has a psychological effect, especially because of what's happening with COVID-19 right now, right? People are already, already feeling sad or depressed or internal because they have to stay inside, right? But when people have walked by and have actually told me that it lifts their spirit, that it gives them hope, that it helps them get through just another day, that to me is deeply important. And that is actually always what's really powerful about doing a mural. It's supposed to make you think. It's supposed to connect to you. It's supposed to bring you to some higher level, you know? Murals adding vibrancy to the street is something that is completely tangible and factual. It's it's. It's not a debatable issue. Uh, visual art adds tangible value to urban spaces. We're constantly being bombarded with messages for our, to our subconscious. And so when we can have positive messages and uplifting imagery and beautiful mushrooms or forests to look across that, I think that 
those do lift the spirits in different ways. It's created an energy and it's created a positive conversation instead of everybody keeping track of death tolls and finances and everything else. It gives, it gives everybody something positive and beautiful to talk about. My hope is that uh, Seattle will see how essential it is to have murals. Like it's good for the economy, it's good for the brain, it's good for the spirit, it's good for the energy of the city. And I would hope that they would see that beauty matters so much to the human experience that that should be a daily goal for us to uh, pour into that and those that create it. We need to use this moment as a, a time for redefinition. And certainly we do on a societal and personal scale. Coronavirus or COVID-19 is just a symptom of the sickness of our society in this deeper way. And a call to, to reflect and to heal um, our own internal disease that is being compounded and reflected back. And so I have a deep hope in our capacity as individuals to make shifts in our lives that lean towards a more regenerative future and a more sustainable future and hope that this time can create a space of reflection for other folks to inquire into what that means for them as well. Oh.